I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we'll discuss a very important concept related to probability distribution and that is on random variables. Now random variable is a very confusing name. To explain this let me start with what it is not. So let me write down here what it is not right so it looks weird kind of thing right so but let it be so so we're talking about random variables first we'll understand what it is not what is not this name is right so random so we should be very clear that it is not random so the random variables are not random that is first thing and then it is not a variable also so it's not a variable so don't get really confused from the name random variable you should have very clear idea about it it is not really a variable and it is not really random right so now the next question is after all if it is not random and if it is not a variable then what is it so so what is it so let's try to figure this out so my answer to this is that it is a function. Now, what type of function? So it is a function. So if you have this thing in your mind that random variables are not really random, okay, and they are not really variables, but they are functions, then it becomes simpler to understand further concepts, right? Now, function of what? So obvious question right so so it is function and we say function of what okay so that's the next question function of what I know these questions uh, may not make proper grammatical sense but you know that's kind of thing it is so we have understood that random variables are not random they are not variables but they are functions now they're function of what okay so we say they are function of a sample space now we are talking about probability distribution so in probability you have events right so let's talk about we have events and every event will have outcomes correct so normally what we do is that we say well this is the sample space set of outcomes this is the sample space the set of outcomes which you may write with letter s or you may write uh, omega or you may say universal set or whatever right so we'll use s for the time being so whenever there is an event there are set of outcomes right so a lot of outcomes these outcomes now a random variable actually associates numbers to these outcomes so so whatever we do here is that is now we'll call it a function for the time being so so let me call this as a random function for the time being okay so we say random function is is to link or to associate each outcome each outcome in the sample space with a real number with a real number so this is what it is so so we define a random function which is which is actually the random variable these two are same things okay we are saying we're calling it as a random function to understand and then we'll just switch over from function to variable whenever required right so random function is to associate each outcome in the sample space with a real number right so that is how we create a function right so let me give you a concrete example okay let's talk about an example now so in the example let's take tossing of coins let's say we have two coins okay and we just toss them now so what are the possibilities so in this case what is the 
possible outcomes. Possible outcomes could be two heads, could be head tails, tail head, or two tails, right? So, so in our space, we have these four countable discrete outcomes. Do you understand? So we are using those terms and soon we will get into getting used to these terms in more liberal sense. So example, two coins are tossed and then we have four outcomes, possible outcomes. You could get two heads, you could get head or tail, tail or head or two tails. These are four possible outcomes. When you toss two coins, we are considering two fair coins. Okay. Now how to define a random variable or a function in this case? Now we say, well, let's define a random variable for this count of a outcome. So as I said, random function is to associate each outcome in the sample space with a real number. So what we do is we designate the name of the function. Now, first thing is name of the function. So we write name of the function as a capital letter. So name of function or you can say name of random variable, right? So we'll keep these terms going on. So, right. So name of a function or a random variable. So we say name should be written in a capital letter, for example, X. It could be X, Y, something like that. But normally it is written X as the name of the function. And that is the variable part, I think. Closest to random variable, this letter X, capital that too, is, is a variable part. Otherwise, it has no link with being a variable or being random. You will realize how. So first thing is we decide about a function X. And then the second part is we define our function, right? So we define function. Defining function means what? We are saying random function is to associate each outcome in the sample space with a real number. So we have to convert these outcomes into numbers. That is what really the random variables function is. Okay. So we say we'll define X as a function and the description is given here. Uh, you could say number of heads. For example, do you understand? So just count the number of heads. Now in this particular case, uh, we have defined our random variable by the name X and the definition is number of heads. I could, you know, uh, make many combinations. We could say number of tails. We could say difference of heads and tails like that. So whatever you are interested in from the outcome of an experiment or whatever event you are working with, you can analyze that event further with the help of random variables or random functions. So that's the whole idea is to take it to the next level. So till now we have calculated probabilities for single events and now we'll look into the group as a whole and see how we can work better with the information we have and draw some other conclusions, right? So that's the whole idea of probability distribution, defining random variables, and then whatever we do next. Okay, so that's the idea of complicating it, okay? Now, we have understood that a random variable should be written in a capital letter, could be X, could be Y, whatever, and then you have to define your function. That is, how Am I going to associate this random function with the set of outcomes I have in hand, right? So in this case, I'm saying I will associate my random variable, capital X, as number of heads, right? So if I do that, in that case, what happens? Now see what. So what we have here, let me make a table and show it to you uh, what is happening here, okay? Now... Another important thing here is that we have to list all the outcomes. And here in this case, we have a case where we have finite number of outcomes, right? Very limited, just four. So we can write all the outcomes here. So we have two heads or we have head or a tail or we have tail or a head or we have two tails, correct? 
So that is what we have in our sample space, right? All the possible outcomes. Now, in this case, we have defined our random variable as number of heads. So, so in the first case, this particular, let's say these are these four outcomes we are talking about in our space. So we say this is my two heads. So the number of heads here is how many? Two, right? How many heads are here? Just number one. How many heads in this case? One. How many heads in this case? Zero. Do you see that? So in this particular case, the random variable x, which is defined as the number of heads when two coins are tossed simultaneously. Do you understand, right? So, so that is the case we are working with, right? And we say that this number, this random variable will always have a number associated with it. Do you see? So, so we say random variable will always have a real number I should write real number as an output let's say as an output since we are calling it a function as an output does it make sense to you right so so in this case what are those real numbers well generally if I say capital X let me write here capital X is my random variable right so then we write the outputs as x i right so so we designate by a lowercase x and subscript i right so in this case we'll say well if the heads are two if the heads are one if the heads are zero number of heads is what we are interested in. you get an idea right so so we say well if i have number of heads as two then the random variable is is two right so that is how we kind of link them. Now another important thing here is we talked about a case where we have discrete finite amount of outcomes, right? So, so that means that random variables could be associated with a discrete number of outcomes, right? Discrete number or continuous. So we could have random functions or random variables defined for an event which have discrete outputs or continuous outputs. Not discrete, we have seen many, throwing a die, things like that. Continuous, also we have taken few cases. For example, uh, height of people, right? Say height of uh, persons in a group. Now that becomes continuous because uh, I could get the values kind of like, uh, let's say in meters, we say 1.7 meters, 1.8 meters. Well, we could also get 1.74 or we could get 1.756, right? So, so there are infinite number of combinations or the ways of measuring the height. So we have all kind of numbers which could be represented on a real line. Do you understand? So. So if we have infinite uncountable, right? So these are discrete are countable, right? And these are not countable, right? Uh, mathematically, we also say uh, if the number is like the number of real numbers, so we say x belongs to real numbers, where x is between, let's say just zero and one, right? So how many real numbers are there between zero to one? infinite do you see that so if you have a output which matches with this then we say it is continuous right infinite number of outputs correct now here is a good note on it what happens when i round the height so if i round the height to let's say one decimal place right so round height to a decimal tenth right for example in that case these outputs will get restricted. Do you see that? So we have outputs as 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, maybe like this. Is it okay? Now, these outputs are discrete. So if you round your continuous data, it becomes discrete. So at times, uh, we will overlap between the two, right? So, 
be careful about it but i hope with this video what you have understood is that random variables are basically functions okay let me write capital random variables are basically functions which link outcomes to which links outcomes to real numbers numbers are easy to work with that's the whole idea right so you could have a random number associated with square of number of heads for example do you see that so you could work with these numbers correct so you can define this number of heads square of number of heads right something something else correct depending on what type of information you can further get from the data collected right so that's the whole idea so let me summarize this as random variables are basically functions which associate each outcome in the sample space with a real number that's kind of important now random variables could be discrete or could be continuous right so discrete as you understand that they have values like one two three four when we say discrete then remember discrete could be finite or infinite right let me write here finite or infinite both right uh, okay finite or infinite for example all natural numbers right one two three four and so on they are discrete but the list just goes on and on correct but still we can you know we work with series which are infinite series discrete we can find this sum and work with those numbers correct so there are ways to work with it so in discrete we will be considering both finite and infinite but discrete and continuous will mean something like this where we say that the the number of outcomes matches with the number of points on a real line between 0 to 1 which you know is infinite right so so that is how we should understand it so random variables better understood as random functions are basic associations which can be defined by you in any way you like so they are not random okay you are defining the way you want so they are not random you decide how to define them that is why it is not random and second it is functions since it's kind of linking input which comes from the sample space doing this manipulation on the input and giving you an output in real numbers i hope with this the concept is clear we'll move on and take some examples to elaborate and understand it better i'm adil kumar you can always share and subscribe my videos and also share questions where you need help with thank you and all the best